ask um, Helen to just come and share a little bit. Thank you. Oh dear. Morning. Um, Post, of course, was a bit um, hit and miss, wasn't it, over Christmas? So I've got something that should have arrived before Christmas, and I just wanted to share it with you all. Um, I, I write to people who used to be in the church quite a bit and send them news links and various things. And this lady, her father was a lay reader here, and so they're quite involved What's with Lyndon Roberts. It was um, Charles Roberts who was the lay reader, and Lyndon was his daughter-in-law. Um, she's another one of these who was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, from the church, we've been sending cards and various things. Anyway, this is what I got uh, after Christmas. Uh, first, our big news. We were told yesterday that I'm officially cancer-free. It has been a very anxious time as my surgery was cancelled the first time and only took place three weeks ago. So I suppose that was just before Christmas. Um, and, and then, of course, having to wait long for the results. This is for you lot. Please thank everyone at St. James's for their prayers and support. It has meant so much to me. That's really what it is. Thanks. Great thing to start the new year on, isn't it? Somebody being cancer-free. We like to hear that. I also, I also just want to share this with you. Um, how many of you remember? You, she hasn't been actually, isn't she? Bless her heart. Alan used to bring Marie a present um, often, but she's frail now, bless her, and can't get here as much. Uh, wonderful, amazing, amazing woman of God who, um, you know, is is just a delight to us, and uh, and is an artist, and she has painted St James Church and given us a copy of it. So I just want to put that out there. There, we will hang it up somewhere. But this is Marie's painting. So um, thank you to Marie. Uh, for getting this to us and for Alan for bringing it. Um, it's beautiful. I will leave it up the front here and then we will find a really suitable place to put it. Um, so bless Maria for that. Um, at the beginning of the year, I always pray for God's word and I did say something of this uh, Christmas uh, that, uh, that I felt that the word this year is stand firm. Um, yeah, I was pressing, Lord, what do you want to say in 2023? And it's stand firm. And this is about keeping our eyes on Jesus. This is about keeping our eyes on not what the world is going on in the world, what is going on in our communities that is negative, but remembering that we have a God who stands with us. Whatever we're going through, whatever you're going through this year, I just believe we need to stand firm together and in the gospel of Jesus Christ and in the good news. The message of hope is so needed today in our communities and we are the message of hope so stand firm let's really stand firm in what we believe and what we know to be true um, and let's share that with our communities i'm going to encourage you now just to stand as we come into our time of worship probably about the last time we'll sing carol so make the most of it Lord Jesus, thank you and praise you that you are with us today. Help us to stand firm this year that whatever ever we're carrying, whatever is going on in our lives, Lord, that we know that you are the God who is in charge of everything. You are the God who is mighty. You are the God that can make a difference. You are the God that can change our communities. You are the God that can change our lives and you can change us. So we pray, Lord Jesus, you will fill us with your spirit. You will inspire us. And Lord, help us to just reach into our hearts now to know lord that your presence is here let us feel the presence of the holy spirit this morning we pray lord amen the reading this morning is, is from matthew's gospel chapter 25 verses 31 to 46 Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. 
Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Good morning, everyone. Let us just, uh, let's just start with prayer. Lord, let's commit this time to you. Create a God as we gather here to listen to your word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may hear you speak to our hearts today. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. So on this New Year's morning, we are thinking about what it is to be God's community of love. Love. Can't get a better message for New Year's Day. Our God is love, and so that's what we're thinking about this morning. Now, there's a legend about St. Francis of Assisi that actually reflects this passage. At one time, he was a wealthy young man and with many worldly goods, but not a lot of inner peace. And riding his horse through the countryside one day, he saw a leper with bleeding sores. Instead of recoiling with horror, Francis was oddly moved and surprised to find himself dismounting and embracing the suffering man. And as he did so, the leper suddenly became Jesus. It definitely sums up part of this message this morning. But this passage in Matthew is actually unique to Matthew. It's not in the other Gospels. It's Jesus' last um, sermon and from the group of teachings on the Mount of Olives. And it's just before the Last Supper, his death and resurrection. Therefore, Jesus is making the message as clear as he can. He doesn't want this to be difficult to understand. He is desperate for us to choose to follow him. This passage is all about choosing to do life with God and God's love for humanity. And when we grasp and truly accept God's love for us and realize just how special and life-changing it is, that's when we naturally want to show this love to others by our actions and words. And so the passage starts by telling us that when Jesus returns, humanity will stand before the final judgment. Jesus gives his listeners the example of the sheep and the goats that will be separated. Now this analogy was very pertinent at that time and in that culture. Sheep and goats often grazed together and Palestinian shepherds separated them at night because the goats needed to be kept warm, but the sheep preferred the open air. They're different temperaments. And this meant something to the listeners. So here we have separation into sheep and goats, and elsewhere in the Gospels too, we have other parables of separation. Good crop from weeds, 
wheat from chaff, good fish from those that are thrown away. Jesus is making it very clear that the last judgment will be either a joining or a separation from God. But the other message in this scripture today is a description from Jesus that is a dramatic effort to wake us up to the needs of others. Jesus is saying that he is present in disguise in everyone who is in need, in each one of us. And really all of scripture boils down to our relationship with God and with each other. And this parable is no different. Love God and each other. Jesus is very good at making us feel uncomfortable. And it's the only way that makes us really stop and reflect, get our attention and help us to consider who we are and our relationship with him. What do we really believe? And do our actions reflect that? Will we do life with God or without? Sheep follow their shepherd, do we follow Christ? And if we do, there should be signs of that in our life. However, that doesn't mean that people who don't have a Christian faith are not loving and seeking to bless others and their community, so please don't misunderstand me. It's just that as a follower of Jesus, we have benefits of being in a relationship with him that gives us an inner freedom that, that cannot be found in anything else. A relationship with God brings healing to our lives and souls, gives us the strength to love when things are tough. And this enables us to have a different perspective on life, knowing that we don't have to do everything in our own strength. If we're able to see others as God sees them, then this will get us ready for the community of God's love when he returns. The passage challenges us to treat all those we encounter as if they were Jesus. So let's think about all those that we meet each day, physically in our shops, in our schools, in our offices, community groups, in the park, in the gym. We, we see many, many people. Well, think about electronically. Think about all those emails we send. There's probably more than we realize. How would different it would be if we saw everyone we met or everyone we wrote an email to as Jesus? You know, when we choose to follow him, we're indwelt by God and God is love. So this love cannot fail but to come out in our words and actions. Our hearts become more compassionate as God is. And so we're being asked here to reflect on our compassion and our solidarity with the hungry, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisoner, the homeless, all those in our community who are downtrodden and struggling are people made in the image of God. Jesus has entered into solidarity with them and we are to throw in our lot there too. So this parable of the sheep and the goats actually is not about the future, but about opening our eyes to the here and now, to the needs of our neighbors, the homeless, the refugee, the struggling single parent, carer, the isolated, the lonely. Jesus identifies with each one. Here we are, ever, we are given time to consider that if we turn away from our brothers and sisters in need, we're turning away from Jesus. In verse 33, Jesus separates people to the right and left. It says that we're going to the place that they have chosen, that we have chosen. So it plainly says, those who have chosen to follow me, to come to me, come to the love and mercy of God. Verses 35 to 36, it's interesting to see the criteria that we're judged by. It is to have that we have acknowledged who Jesus is. It's not difficult. And how have we treated those in need? There's nothing about the Ten Commandments or religious law or obligation. It is simple. Do we choose to follow Jesus and love those around us? In all of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke is this famous following verse. When Jesus is asked what the greatest commandment is, he replies, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Because God is only interested in the state of our hearts. Are we fully for him? And if so, his love will pour out to those around us in the form of compassion and care. When we've chosen Jesus, we are acknowledging the part of us that is made in his image. Therefore, light shines out our innate goodness 
is God's image. So this changes our identity and our worth. For by choosing Jesus, we become a child of God and are adopted into his family. If we're all made in God's image, then when we look at each other, what do we see? Do we see duty, annoyance, or do we see Jesus? God is love. And if we're not made in his image, we would not have that capacity to love one another. We are wonderfully and beautifully made in his image. And the love that we show each other as humans is proof that we are made in the image of a creator God who is love. Otherwise, how could it be that all humans need and desire to receive and give love if that wasn't the case? This passage is encouraging us to demonstrate this love through acts of mercy, but small things that we can do every day. These acts do not depend on wealth, ability or intellect. They're simply acts freely given and received. And as a church, we're called to take care of those who have deep needs. And we cannot solely hand this responsibility over to our modern institutions or governments. I have heard people criticize governments and our social care and our councils for not providing enough support and help in our community. But what happened hundreds of years ago before we had this type of help from our governments? Communities lived closer together. They helped each other more. They knew their neighbors. They raised their children together, nursed the sick together. We have been blessed with a government that does a tremendous to help, amount to help those in needs. But at times now, instead of working with them, we've backed off. We sometimes say that it is not our responsibility to care. Society thinks it's someone else's job. But Jesus is telling us here that it's ours. The church community, God's community of love. This passage in Matthew is actually linked uh, to one in Isaiah verse Um, chapter 58 verse 7 where he also mentions the care for others but what really caught my attention was actually the verse that followed verse 8 so verse 7 is this is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him not to turn away from your own flesh and blood and in that particular content it didn't mean family there that flesh and blood meant humanity but then verse 8 goes on Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be at your rear guard. This is the result of us loving others through acts of compassion. The glory of the Lord will be shown, and healing will follow. There could not be a more wonderful outcome. And I want to see this outcome in our community, to see people's lives healed and transformed by God's love. And now here at St. James, we can celebrate all that God is doing through us because we have Jim's Community Advice Centre that is a place of support and friendship. And we partner with Citizens Advice, with CAP, with Food Bank, the Homeless Shelter. We have toddler groups, children and youth groups. This is our demonstration of God's love to our community. We want everyone to see his love in action and service. And that reminded me of actually a quote from Francis of Assisi, who I mentioned earlier, where he said, preach the gospel every day, and only if you have to, use words. How will we be different if we're not walking alongside those in need? How will people know that God loves them unconditionally and that salvation is available if we're not showing it? So here Jesus is reminding us that our faith lacks sincerity if it doesn't reach out to others. God wants us to apply his word to our community. But I don't want you to be sitting there feeling guilty because the workload you're already under is too big. Remember, good works will not save us, but choosing to follow Jesus will. The last thing that this passage should do is to make us feel guilty that we haven't done enough good works. That is a lie. We are all enough just as we are. Our service should come out of love and concern for others, not from guilt. If we're already stretched, don't fret about doing more. Just look at those that you already work with and see where we can be a blessing in their lives. Ask God to help you see them differently, to see them as if they were Christ. Pray for them. Mother Teresa said, we cannot do great things, only small things with great love. 
And there are definitely times over the years when I've been in a church service and heard a similar message and I have felt downhearted, exhausted and guilty. How can I fit more in? But isn't that so typical of our warped culture to assume we must do more, be more productive, to earn love or worth? So let's stop there. Remember our worth is not in our actions but in our relationship with God. The acts of love come out of this relationship. Salvation is only received by grace and cannot be earned. The point is that as God's children, we become involved in his work and then people will come to know God's love through us. Of course, if we do have time to join the bigger community action that helps the poor, to be the hands and feet of Christ, then, then that's great, let's do that. But if we don't have that time or ability for that type of involvement, Let's just ask God in prayer how we can help those we're already in relationship with. Perhaps that's our immediate family. Perhaps it's our elderly neighbor or our work colleague. We are all at different times of life with different demands. For some of us, it's not about doing more, but about loving those we're already in community with. See if your friend needs prayer or if we can help our spouse more willingly or ring a lonely relative. It's about being in relationship with those that are struggling, walking alongside people. If we can just pray for those in that place, then that is what God has caused us to do. So these words from Jesus are to prompt us to reassess what we're doing. What does God break your heart for in 2023? Let's spend some time this week talking to God about this. Should we be laying something down, picking something new up? Are we involved in the lives of those who are struggling? Maybe that's what we need to ask ourselves. Who would call on me if they could reach out? Or have I so organized my life that the needy never impinge on me? And then that last verse reminds us that there will be an eternal separation from God if we don't choose him. We have a choice, but why do we have choice? Because God wants us to love him willingly. We all know that if someone is forced to love you, it's not real love. That is why we can choose. This passage is urging us to choose, to choose Jesus, to allow the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to heal our wounds and make us new. Who wouldn't want that? So maybe today is a day that God calls you to be involved in community action. Maybe today is a day God helps you to see the face of Jesus in your relative, neighbor, or work colleague. Maybe today is the day you decide to follow Jesus, New Year's Day. So let us love without measure or prejudice and serve everyone we can. Such love for others glorifies God by reflecting his love for us all. It's a call to choose to do life with God and for his love for us is eternal and real. Jesus says that with coming into the world as a vulnerable child, he has shown that everyone is a chosen person Everyone is to be treated with limitless respect. This is the way to get ready for God's final community of love. Jesus is already present, but in the disguise in every person. So this year, let us not miss the point of living, which is God's love. Amen. So I'm going to lead us all in prayer, but can I ask the worship band to come up because we're going to then continue into worship. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Thank you that we do not have to earn it. It is freely given by you. May we recognize your faith face in others as we go into this new year. May we come to you with expectant hearts, choosing to do life with you. May our hearts be so full of your love that your glory shines out in our community. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always.